Investigators try and figure out why a gaping hole blew open on an Alaska Airlines plane mid-flight after taking off from Portland. The NTSB says a crucial piece of the Boeing 737 MAX jet, the door plug, has been found in somebody's backyard. And take a look at these new images from investigators. What you're seeing there is seat cushions and headrests ripped off by the explosive force of the depressurization in the cabin. The warning light previously went off on the same plane multiple times, including the day before the horrifying flight. Alaska Airlines has restricted them from fl flying that plane on big flights, like long ones, to Hawaii, for example, over the ocean, in case they had to quickly land. Listen to this passenger describe the moment the door plug blew out. You heard a big, loud bang to the left rear rear, like in row 20 and a whooshing sound and all the oxygen masks deployed. You could see later that there was a two-window section panel that blew out. It's about as wide as a refrigerator. And there was, I guess, a boy and his mother were sitting in that row, and his shirt was sucked off him and out of the plane, and his mother was holding on to him. Joining us now is the woman in charge of this investigation, Jennifer Hamidi. She is the chair of the National Transportation Safety Board and was able to inspect the plane, actually walk through it. So she has a lot of information. Thank you very much for being with us. Let's begin with what you saw that we don't know more about uh, when you walked through that plane. What do people have to know this morning? Yeah, thank you very much for having me, Poppy. Um, it, and it was a it described to us by the flight crew that it was a very violent, explosive event. Uh, when it occurred, and you can see that from inside the aircraft. Now, we were able to inspect the airframe itself from the exterior and found absolutely no structural damage uh, to the airplane, so that's a great thing. Um, inside, there was a lot of damage to non-critical uh, components, everything from paneling to trim to insulation coming out of the paneling, uh, some separation of the plastic inside of the windows, although the seal uh, and the uh, uh, glass windows themselves were still intact. And then, of course, you have the torquing of some of the seats in those rows. So it's... It, it must have been truly terrifying. I mean, it's a it's the size of a refrigerator, the hole in the plane, while you're in the air going 400 miles an hour. It's technically called a door plug, but that's the door. I mean, the door blew off for all uh, intents and purposes. And I, I wonder to you, now that they've found it, what will that tell you about if this could happen on other planes? Yeah, and... and it, just to clarify, this is not an operational door inside right. the aircraft. Uh, passengers would only see the paneling. Outside, you would see uh, what looks like a door. It's a plug in the uh, aircraft itself. But uh, uh, through, through, from the time we got here, we began uh, documenting the scene and looking at uh, how the airframe uh, uh, is situated right now, uh, looking at everything from witness marks and paint transfer on different components uh, to try to begin analyzing what occurred. Our focus right now is on this aircraft uh, to determine what happened, how it happened, and to prevent it from happening again. And once we determine that, mm -hmm. we can see if there's a greater concern uh, that we want to, to issue an urgent safety recommendation for. So talking about some potential warnings that this could happen, December 7th and then again on January 3rd and January 4th, the depressurization warning light on this plane came on. And then it was inspected, and then it was reset, and then this plane was back in the air, but with conditions, right, that it couldn't do long-haul flights over the ocean like to Hawaii in case it had to land. After those three warnings, should this plane have ever been in the air? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question, because that is what we are looking at with Alaska right now and with Boeing right now. That alert that illuminated those three times certainly is very disconcerting to our investigators, and we want to look at that. But it may have absolutely nothing to do uh, with what occurred in the cabin of the aircraft on that uh, during that event, uh, it what it did illuminate uh, the 
uh, a flight crew had switched to a different mode uh, because there is a backup system. Uh, and uh, the at, once they landed, it was tested, uh, inspected, reset, and put back in service. But as you said, Alaska Air took uh, some precautions to put some restrictions on where that could fly. Uh, and that's something where uh, our systems crew is looking into. But if there's a precaution on where a plane can fly, should that plane be flying anywhere? And that's what we're looking at. Uh, Alaska Air tells us the reason uh, that was put in place uh, is so that they could uh, get to an airport if the light illuminated and could get repairs again. Uh, but it is something that is a concern for us, so we're going to look. But again, I would just caution, it may have absolutely nothing to Fair. do uh, with what occurred on that date. No. Fair, and I'm glad you point that out again. I was flying home last night with our two little kids right behind, you know, the same area as this plane, a different plane, but still, it's all I could think about. So my question this morning is, mm -hmm. is it safe for anyone to fly on these Boeing MAX jets right now? It's our aviation uh, system is the safest in the world. We are the gold standard for safety in our airspace. Uh, but we need to maintain that. And when an event occurs like this, it is up to us to take a, a close look at what happened to make sure we maintain safety in the air. Uh, for this one, I will mention we're, we're um, disappointed that the cockpit voice recorder was overwritten. We can learn a lot from that cockpit voice recorder. Uh, we have urged the FAA to extend the cockpit voice recorder time from two hours to 25 hours because we want to hear communications, noise, alerts on the flight deck, which may help us uh, prevent uh, 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 future tragedies. Just so people understand, that is what sort of automatically happens on some of these planes that aren't, aren't the newest, is that every two hours it sort of resets and you want that to be extended much longer so that you can always hear in a situation like this. Just finally, with Boeing, there have been a number of issues, including two fatal crashes with the Boeing MAX line. Uh, both of those crashes were caused in part because of the MCAS system, which they've changed. But is there a bigger issue going on here at Boeing regarding safety? Yeah, we'll have to see that through the course of our investigation. Uh, in the past, when we've investigated, say, a uh, 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 malfunction on a plane uh, just about a year ago, we found that we needed to go broader and look at repairs for all of the fleet. Uh, we'll, we may look at the manufacturer, the design uh, of this aircraft, but we go where the evidence takes us. We really appreciate all of this information this morning, Jennifer. Thanks to you and your team, and come back as you have more information.